Okay, now that we know how and we've reviewed how to solve equations and we understand that in solving equations we're just getting the variable by itself by doing the opposite operations. Let's add now the radicals into this mix and see if we can solve these equations that have radicals in them. Okay, so here looking at this first problem we have the square root of x equals 4. Now you can probably look at this and tell what the answer is supposed to be, but let's do it the proper way so that you can get used to doing it with easy problems and then it'll be, um, you know, it'll be more habit when you get to the more difficult ones. Okay, we want to get x alone, but right now x is being square rooted. So the opposite of square root would be to square. Now we have to do it to both sides to keep it balanced. So now squaring the square root are opposite operations, so those undo each other. And now here we have x equals 4 squared, which would be 16. Now we do need to get into the habit of always checking our answer. Sometimes things work out in the algebra, um, but then if you plug them back into the original equation, they turn out to be actually an extraneous solution. So we need to always double check ourselves. We check by placing the answer back in for the variable and see if in fact it's a true statement. So if I plug the 16 back in for x, that would be the square root of 16 equals 4. And that is a true statement, so it does check. Therefore, our answer is x equals 16. Okay, let's try another one. Here we have the equation, the square root of y minus 5 equals 3. Now again, we're isolating the variable. So you've got several things going on here with y. You've got the square root and you've got 5 being subtracted from it. You have to look at this in the proper order. We can't get rid of this minus 5 first because this is all underneath the radical. So the only way we could get rid of it would it be to get rid of the radical first and remove that. So we're going to have to do that. The opposite of square root would be to square, so we're going to do that to both sides. Squaring the square root will undo itself. And now on the, le on the right hand, uh, sorry, the left hand side now we have y minus 5 equals 3 squared would be 9. Now we still are isolating our variable, so the opposite of subtracting 5 would be to add 5. So we're going to do that to both sides. That leaves us with y equals 9 plus 5 would be 14. And then we do need to double check ourselves. So if we do the quick check on there, that would be the square root of 14 minus 5 is supposed to equal 3. Well, 14 minus 5 is 9. And yes, in fact, the square root of 9 is 3. So that tells us that our answer was correct. y equals 14. Now what happens if we have something like this? Here we have the cube root of 4t is equal to 2. Well, remember, we're solving for t, so we need to get this out of this radical. The opposite of cube rooting would be to cube. And we can do that as long as we do it to both sides. Cube rooting, a cube, undoes itself, and now we have 4t equals 2 cubed, which is 8. And now, the uh, um, instead of multiplying by 4, to get that alone, we'd have to do the opposite, which would be to divide by 4. So our answer here would be t equals 2. And again, we always want to double check ourselves. The check on that would be to say the cube root of 4 times 2 is supposed to equal 2. Well, that says the cube root of 8 equals 2, and that, in fact, is a true statement. So that checks. Now our last one over here is automatically no solution for our answer. The reason for that is this. You can never ever take a square root or any even root and get a negative number. Because this is saying what do I have to square, the opposite of it, uh, to get this. Well, it, it doesn't work that way. We can't take the square root of a number and get a negative answer, so this will always be no solution.